very good afternoon to you and welcome to the news at 2 on OGTV channel 2 for VHF. I am Ijo Fabajo. One of the assistants to the governor of Ogo State on news media, Ahmed Akonjiba Balola, has put smiles on the faces of the less privileged and the motherless bakes home as a celebrated his birthday with gifts and food items to the home. Ahmed Akonjiba Balola had earlier been celebrated by the chief of staff to the governor in his office, with his staff praying for him to have more grace to witness many more years on earth. The celebrant director led a group of people to Stella of Vastajo Omar Ibarra House in the state to rejoice, wine and dine with the children who are with special needs and also with no parent. Ahmed Akonjiba Balola said he decided to celebrate his birthday this way to follow Governor Ibikula Moson's footsteps who loves given to the needy and helping the poor. He promised to continue doing this for as long as he is alive and of course to celebrate his birthday. Celebrating my birthday with them shows that I'm very happy. Among those that followed him to the Stella of Basodo Home were special advisor, special assistants, consultants, consultants to the governor, friends, families, and well wishers. Prayers were offered for the birthday boy, the less privileged, the governor, Ogun State, and Nigeria. Ogun State government will on Thursday, 22nd of June 2017, present 1,000 certificate of occupancy and other title documents to another batch of beneficiaries under the Omanas Charter program conceived by Governor Ivikula Muson's administration. The certificate of occupancy and other title documents will be represented by the state head of service, Mr. Abayo Mishobandi, at Akate Grand Okim Moson Abeokuta. All contacted beneficiaries are to come with valid means of identification and photocopies of their house documents. Ogun State Government, through ITEC Construction Company, will start the second asphalt lane of the Mortuary Junction or Lonushugu Okilanturu Mall Junction Road on Monday, 19th of 19th to Friday, 23rd of June, 2017. Time of the road construction work is between half past seven in the morning and six in the evening. Motorists are therefore advised to take alternative route, which is Okilanturu Isaliaki Adatan Mall Junction or Bantoko. Driving against traffic will not be condoned, hence motorists are warned to desist from this act. The Minister of Power, Works and Housing, the Baton Diradi Fashola, has officially flagged off the reconstruction project of a Papa Wharf Road in Lagos to contractor. That was the official signing of the Memorandum of Understanding between the federal government and organized private sector, expected to ease the untold hardship that characterized the movement of passengers, haulage, and heavy duty equipment on a Papa Wharf Road. Cement, concrete. So you are going to have a concrete pavement room, not a bituminous tar room. Minister of Power and Housing, Bob Batson D. Fashola assured stakeholders in the maritime and transport sector that the project will address the continuous degradation of the road and drainage system on the axis. He however solicited their cooperation in various areas including provision of olden way for trucks to park and diversion of routes to access the port complex. This question that we will hand over today will take one year. We will try to see how best we can work to reduce the construction time and gain more time. The reconstruction project of the Port Assas Road is being bankrolled by the Nigerian Port Authority and some industries to the tune of 4.3 billion naira. If you do not have that provision, you will be sanctioned. We are partnering with them to fund this project as part of our CSR. 
There was an interactive session with a stakeholders on workable synergy to support the contractors on site so that the reconstruction project can be delivered before the expected duration of 12 months. At least 200 million girls and women alive today have undergone a form of female genital mutilation or the other. The practice is rooted in gender inequality and attempt to control women's sexuality and ideas about purity, modesty and beauty. It reflects deep-rooted inequality between the sexes and constitutes an extreme form of discrimination against women. Bimbo Lawal's special report on this social search scourge is presented from the studio. Female genital mutilation, also known as female circumcision, is the procedure involved in partial or total removal of the female external genitals. It is conducted from days after birth and is usually initiated and carried out by women who see it as a source of honor and who fear that failing to have their daughters and granddaughters caught will expose the girls to social exclusion. I know female genital mutilation is, I think, is when they try to circumcise the female child. And female circumcision is a traditional way of trying to remove part of the clitoris of a female child in order to prevent a child from being promiscuous. Medical practitioners comment on the health effects of female circumcision. A child can get affected because all these instruments they use are on sterile instruments and the child can also bleed. And when this starts, these traditional beds attendants that do these things don't take the child to the hospital but they leave the child trying to do some rituals to prevent the bleeding but at the end of the day child might bleed to death. Many societies have also frowned at the practice, describing it as ultimate violation of right and physical integrity. But it is not medically proven that it is right. So it is against women rights. Female genital mutilation has, has been advocated all over the time. It is not good. It has it carries a lot of risk for the woman, both now and when they become adults. So it is a practice to be discouraged. Female genital mutilation is usually performed without the victim's permission and often against their will, thereby making it one of the most vicious practices in some societies of the world. And despite stiff opposition against it in some other societies, the practice has refused to go away, making women face humiliation and debasement of their body and dignity. Traditional hairdo has returned to the vogue as women now wear the local styles with pride and happiness as it gives them sense of identity in the society. In this special report, our reporter KND Timitayo takes a look at the return of traditional hairdo to the vogue in Abelka the Metropolis. Our report is presented from our studios. In Nigeria, Air on the woman's head is a sort of pride and dignity. In the past, if not to the present, Nigeria women show great concern in styling to enhance their beauty. Many Nigerian women still wear the local patterns with pride as it gives them a sense of identity and is less expensive compared to contemporary fringe, braid and ponytail. Natural edu is okay. As in, um, some people like doing natural hair. As for me, I love natural hair because it makes my beauty to come out. It's very good than, make, uh, than applying those with one attachments on our hair. Right, okay. For those who know about it, I would love people to continue making their natural hair. Hairstylists speak on the beauty, convenience, and all the advantages of the traditional hairdo. Traditional hairdo uh, is very, very good for us to do, but nowadays we don't like it. But it's what we need to do because it's our tradition. It's what we need to do. So, traditional hairdo, I love it. Please, ladies. Try and do a traditional hairstyle. Because you just try it. People don't like it, though, but just try it. It's, it makes your hair grow. It elevates and revives culture in Nigeria. I've had no one to pay 
tawa dididi o ma ye ki ani oju wa ma jade yato si un ta fi iun kun o de ma je ki e wa wa jade dada o je nkan to okunrin mi like gba mi a le ma sise mi yato si didi yen nikan with traditional edu, the beauty is just there. And now on the first scene, a man has died and 10 people have been injured after a man drove a van into worshippers near a North London mosque. Eight people were taken to hospital after the terrorist attack near Finsbury Park Mosque. A 48-year-old man has been arrested on suspicion of attempted murder. Police said all the victims of their talk, which took place outside Muslim Welfare House, were Muslim. Metropolitan Police's Deputy Assistant Commissioner El Basso said the terrorist attack began when the van was driven into a man who was already being given first aid by the public on the pavement. Sadly, Londoners are waking up to the news of another dreadful incident in the capital that has left a number of people seriously injured. The attack unfolded whilst a man was already receiving first aid from public at the scene, and sadly that man has died. Any causative link between his death and the attack will form part of our investigation. It is too early to state if his death was as a result of this attack. Several of those hospitals are seriously injured and there are currently no other suspects. Extra pleas are being deployed to reassure communities, especially those observing Ramadan. And as we go on the news, immortality is to leave your life doing good things and leaving your mark behind. And that concludes the news at 2. Thank you for watching. I am Ido Fabaju.